And here comes one small band who are trying to stop it. The beaten up minibus has been hired by the Indian Rationalist Association, a group of activists who are traveling through the southern state of Kerala to promote their national miracle exposure campaign. These rationalists are mostly students, teachers and young scientists, educated but not wealthy. Every day they set up their banner in half a dozen villages and present a road show to expose the tricks of the godmen. Their leader is a journalist, Sanal Adamariku. He begins by showing photographs of senior politicians with a famous godman. The same godman was later jailed for running a prostitution racket. He then performs Sai Baba's magical trick with holy ash, producing cascades of the sacred substance from a pellet of compressed ash concealed in his palm. To be told that such a revered godman is a trickster is a direct challenge to these people's beliefs. They are keen to examine the evidence for themselves. The next trick is one performed by godmen to convince followers they can produce fire by mental power. In fact, it's all done by simple chemistry. The paper has been treated with potassium permanganate, and when glycerine is poured on, the paper bursts into flame. In the Indian villages, the people are really superstitious. And there is a very clear, uh, which we would like to explain as scientific illiteracy. Above the normal illiteracy, there's a scientific illiteracy. Even in a state like Kerala, where the literacy level is almost 100%, the scientific illiteracy is enormous. So this campaign, which is reaching around 100 districts all over the country, it will be talking to people directly and explaining the so-called miracles. And through that, we are trying to get people out of the superstitious belief. And maybe every meeting we are getting some 200 to 500 people listening to us. And the word is spread. And it's reaching people very fast. In the These rationalists are attacking superstition rather than religion. But in India, the two have become deeply confused. This is an everyday miracle, frequently performed at festivals and temples all over India. In many of the temples, when there is a festival, people do some miracles like piercing on their cheeks. And it's generally believed that it's possible only because they are blessed by the goddess of gods. We are trying to tell people that these kind of superstitions are meaningless, and these are taking them backward to the 18th century. So we have to continuously keep them aware that these are mere tricks. Either Contrary to appearances, piercing causes very little damage and even less pain. It would probably hurt if someone did it to you against your will, but these strongly motivated volunteers barely feel discomfort when they stick the needles in. The pain is more in the mind of the beholder. The fleshy areas which are pierced have no large blood vessels or bones. If the skin is stretched before the spike goes in, the flesh hardly bleeds. Fire eating is also a lot less dangerous than it looks. The standard technique in religious festivals is to use pieces of camphor which catch fire at a very low temperature. The bottom of the camphor remains very cool so it doesn't burn. When the mouth is closed, the flame is quickly extinguished by the carbon dioxide in the breath. Encouraged by the rationalists, a member of the crowd has a go for himself. The rationalists will be on the road for many weeks, funding their campaign with their own money and time. No religious festival would be complete without a firewalking display. 
Devotees are told that their faith will prevent any pain. But these rationalists reject faith and put their confidence in physics and physiology. The thick skin on the soles of the feet is a slow conductor of heat, and so is the ash on top of the embers. If you keep moving, the fire has no time to burn through the skin. It doesn't hurt at all. Anybody who can have a little bit of courage can do that thing and it doesn't hurt. But all the same, when we do such things to expose the miracle men and the goat men and the gurus, there are people who are the agents of the gurus who try to sabotage such pro pro programs. They sometimes try to put uh, sugar into this fire so that it, it melts and sticks to the people. Then they normally claim that it's uh, 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 because we are challenging the gurus and the gurus' wrath is on you. Now we are very careful that they don't put either broken glasses or sugar into the fire. Broken glass and sugar may not be the worst the rationalists have to face. Their challenge to the godmen is just beginning. The good humor of this campaign may be tempered by conflicts to come.